Hi, I'm Chris, Chris Yelkotsi. I'm the proprietor, sole proprietor currently of City Villages, and City Villages is a firm that's dedicated towards supplying social and affordable housing for all in every corner of our community. My background is urban planning and architecture. I'm here to talk a little bit about the challenges we're having these days in building net zero buildings, both single family homes, coach houses, and also multi unit buildings. What's interesting to me is that systems of modular and panelized wall construction have not penetrated the Canadian market very much. The advantage right now is that this type of construction lends itself very well to passive house standard, lead platinum buildings, green globes, other types of assessment systems. And in this slide, you're looking at a coach house on the right side and a single family home on the left side. This building will be built and is, can be designed this way because of using panelized wall systems and foundation for that matter, floors and roof. That's a really big benefit. In this next slide, what you see is a rather unique style of building. Under the Ontario Building Code, it's actually only a three story building, even though it might look like a four or five story building. The reason for that is an extensive use of mezzanines. To build this kind of building and stick framing would be quite difficult. To build it as panelized construction, because the floor to ceiling heights can vary up between eight to as much as 16 feet, uh, you can build this kind of building where mezzanines play a role to add more living space while still keeping the building in part nine of the Ontario Building Code. So this is where panelized construction becomes really, really important. That's the only way that we can build this kind of building, a missing middle kind of building that in many ways is a mid-rise kind of building yet under the Ontario Building Code still constitutes a low-rise three-story part nine building. So that's all loft style apartments. In the next slide you're going to see a little bit more about how this kind of building gets done. What you see here in this slide is an example of how the mezzanines fit into the building so that you have a three-story uh, structure, yet at the same time, as you can see on the left side of the screen, if you look at the building, you'd say to yourself, you have one, two, three, four, five stories. So the look is very much like a five-story building, yet under the building code would be classed um, as a three-story building. You can see from there, the sort of complex forms that you would have in terms of wall heights, as well as um, floors and those kinds of components that can be all panelized. Many of these sites are actually very difficult to work on because they have uh, tight urban uh, surroundings. The big advantage to panelized construction is of course that this can be assembled on site with minimal disruption to neighboring properties, uh, roads can be closed possibly for uh, half of a lane, that type of thing for a, a bit of a, a period so that the uh, uh, site, the, the panels can be offloaded and erected on site um, at the time on a floor by floor basis. So that's a really, really great way of using this type of super insulated uh, panel construction, uh, letting us get to what you can call in the end result, there's no reason why not, uh, net zero buildings in low rise, uh, single family, and even coach house when you think about it. On this slide, you'll see that um, again, 
uh, on the lower right hand corner, you'll see very complex structure um, with varying wall heights and ceiling panels and floors. This again lends itself to panelized construction is actually fairly difficult from a stick framing perspective. The layouts of the interiors of the units in this design allow for the building to be severed into parts. So in a sense, um, when you look at the lower left side uh, slide, part of the slide, you will see um, four and five units spread out. Uh, throughout the building, but they're in the four quadrants of the building. And from that perspective, um, this building actually can be severed because it's on a corner lot um, into uh, three low rise apartment building parts, um, each with a separate ownership and with a shared common use agreement for the use of the stairs and elevator. So it's a very novel form. Uh, currently, we have a project that's going to go uh, into construction that uh, creates another new form in Ottawa, which is a row triplex. So you have a three unit building, but it takes the form of a six door row with each one of the um, units on each floor having individual access off the street. So very unique. Uh, it will uh, get a rezoning soon. Uh, and will go into construction very soon. In all these types of buildings, both the coach houses, single family homes, and multi family units, accessibility is an important feature. There's been many improvements in the area of lifts, both Lula ele elevator lifts that are commercial style, low rise apartment elevator. Uh, that can service multiple units and also um, single unit access lifts. Uh, there's chair lifts. So the, the single family house that you saw in the design will have a chair lift uh, that will access the basement, the main floor, and the half floor above that. The bedroom styles as well, um, and bathroom styles as well, will permit the use of a wheelchair. Big advantage in terms of panelized construction is that when we're designing the building, we make sure that the hard points that are necessary to mount the kinds of accessibility accessories that you need um, can be built right into the panel and you know they're there when you put the building together. Uh, so they can be identified on the shop drawings and can be put into the building as a whole. So both elevator chases uh, and those accessibility features that you're going to need in the building can be included uh, in your shop drawings. My passion has always been looking at how we can better support those parts of our community, those parts of our community that currently can't support themselves. Our entire institutionalized social care system is far too unaffordable. Taxpayers aren't happy to pay it. And we need to start to think about how we can help each other. To that end, we've been developing the way of using a village to help each other and to come up with ways where instead of institutionalization, we actually deinstitutionalize social care and benefits and aging in place. So from that perspective, when we build a building that is accessible, could have long-term care bed facilities as part of it, using these kinds of systems, we can reduce the demand on that very heavily used currently um, institutional care industry and hopefully in the end result, we'll actually be able to afford to take care of all of ourselves, take care of all of us.